Welcome to the David Pakman Show. I am Farron Cousins, host of Ring of Fire and Fair and Balanced, and I am sitting in for David today. And boy, have we got a good one for you today, folks. We've got, of course, Mark Meadows and other Trump allies trying to already weasel out of the indictments in the state of Georgia. We've got Marjorie Taylor Greene hinting that she might be wanting a better office in the future, and I'm not talking about a new place in Congress. We have Tommy Tuberville, who may not actually be legally allowed to serve in the United States Senate. And of course, George Santos's ally, former staffer, indicted for impersonating a Kevin McCarthy staffer. All of that and much, much more is coming up on today's show. But let's start once again with the state of Georgia. According to a report from Rolling Stone, Trump's co-conspirators are already racking their brains, trying to figure out the best way to get out of this whole mess that they've all found themselves in. According to this report from Rolling Stone, Trump's lawyers are even considering just asking the U S Supreme court to go ahead, intervene, and let's just make all this go away. But nobody, Nobody is trying harder right now than Mark Meadows. Mark Meadows has made the first move and his lawyers actually submitted a filing requesting that his particular indictment get moved out of state court and over into the federal courthouse, which is actually right across the street from the state courthouse. And there's lots of different reasons why Mark Meadows would want this to happen, but his lawyers are actually using a law put in place following the civil war that basically says any action by a federal official, you know, even if it's an action at the state level, they're doing a federal action should be moved from state court to federal court. Now, of course, I I'm way oversimplifying that law, but for the purposes of understanding the law basically says, if you're a federal official, you're doing something in a state, we can move it to federal court. So his lawyers, of course, are making that argument saying, listen, judge, Hey, we like you, right? But there's a statute. We don't want to go against the statutes. <laughs> you know, we're not lawbreakers it says you got to move us over to federal court. So, you know, lickety split, let's get on it. Right? Eh, not so cut and dry folks, because that statute isn't just about federal officials. As I said, it's also about federal duties. You have to be carrying out your federal obligations in that state. And there is a very important caveat to this because the federal obligations that Mark Meadows was allegedly carrying out had to do with the 2020 election, but it only had to do based on these indictments with the state of Georgia and under the United States constitution, each and every individual state in this nation gets to determine without federal influence, the nature of how they conduct their elections, how they count the votes, where they hold the elections. The only thing they don't control is when election day is for a federal election. Other than that, they're in charge of all of it, including the state's electors. And because the state is in charge of these actions, if Mark Meadows based on the indictment was trying to interfere in any way with the state run activities that would not in fact be covered by this statute that says you should move the case to federal court. So it seems simple enough, right? I mean, I think the prosecutors obviously have a very good argument for keeping it in the state courthouse, but Another thing, and I'm sure this weighs heavily on uh, Mark Meadows mind is the fact that state courts in Georgia allow cameras. They allow TV cameras. This trial, if it's in state court could uh, legally be televised and likely would be federal courthouses. On the other hand, prohibit that. So if this case is moved to a federal courthouse, no cameras, no oversight, Nobody in the public gets to hear all the dirty little deeds that are going on. They either have to wait for reporters to tell them, or they're going to have to go through the court transcripts, which we all know they're not going to do. So on top of that, 
it would also be a much friendlier federal jurisdiction. Even though the charges would remain state charges, Meadows would be in front of a federal judge, most likely one appointed by Republicans. So he might get a friendlier venue if that is the case. So those are the benefits Meadows has of trying to move this again, based on that statute, doesn't seem like he would be able to, but if he is successful in getting it moved, he then is likely going to move to dismiss it because if he's able to make the argument successfully in court that he was only carrying out his federal obligations, if the judge grants that, then that means his federal obligations would then be protected under us law, at which point the charges would likely be dismissed. Now for Meadows, he's about the only one of these indicted co-conspirators that would be successful in making that argument. Donald Trump would likely be viewed more as a private citizen, not as president of the United States, because he was technically candidate Trump doing this, not necessarily president Trump. That argument could be made. Uh, according to legal experts. So Trump wouldn't be able to do this. Most likely Giuliani definitely couldn't. He wasn't even a government official. None of the other folks were, uh, well, I, actually a couple of them may have been, but other than that, Meadows is probably the only one that can go this route. He's already trying it. He's <laughs> making his escape and the rest of Trump world is scratching their heads, wondering how in the heck they are going to get out of this. Staying healthy and feeling generally good is all about habits that are sustainable, finding what works for you, something you'll stick to and it might be different for everybody. That's why I keep my routines really simple. Before I have my morning coffee, I'll have a scoop of AG1. AG1 is just this tasty green nutritional supplement. You can mix it into water or other drinks or smoothies. You get 75 high quality vitamins and probiotics from whole food sources. It's just a scoop of AG one. You're covering everything you would need for the day. I just don't have time to be dealing with 10 different vitamin supplement bottles or combining all these things. It's also really expensive to do that. It's just a single scoop of AG one in the morning gives me all the vitamins that I'm looking for, saves time, more cost effective. You can go to drink AG one.com slash Pacman to get five free travel packs of AG one plus a free one year supply of vitamin D. I've talked about vitamin D many times. The link is down below.